So I saw this message on my Discord server and I thought it's really interesting so I'm making a video about it. So you can see this guy spamming a message that claims you can get a free gift card of $50 on Steam. And you can see the link here, uh, it's actually steamcommunity.com link. And steamcommunity.com is actually the official website of Steam. So although it looks like it's too good to be true, a random guy posting, you know, free Steam gift cards on random Discord servers, the link itself is not suspicious because it's a steamcommunity.com link. So that's what I thought. As soon as I saw this link, I clicked on it because the link itself is not suspicious. It's steamcommunity.com, right? The official website of Steam. So look what happens when I click on it, click on visit site. Look at this. It is indeed Steam website. It says you received a $50 gift card to your balance and choose an option to get started. There is an option that says sign in. And if I click on sign in, it's going to open up another pop-up window like this, where you can actually sign in to your Steam account. You can either enter your account name and password, or you can just directly scan this QR code to login. If you look closely at the domain name here, it's not actually the website that we clicked on. Screamcommunity.com, I think that's an L, not an I. So this is definitely not steamcommunity.com, the link that we saw on the in the Discord message. This is a completely different link as compared to this. The domain name is different. It's obviously a phishing website that is trying to impersonate the official Steam website, which is steamcommunity.com, which is the actual link in the Discord message. But how did we get redirected to this phishing website when we click on an official Steam link, right? That was my initial thought. But then if you hover over this uh, URL in the message, you can see in the brackets, there is another link. It looks like a short link, sc.link slash l5ucb. So, Let's try this again. Let me click on that again. And you can actually see Discord tells you the link that you're going to. And this link is clearly not the link that we thought we are going to. It's not the Steam website. It is some short end link. And this short end link is actually redirecting us to this phishing website, which is hosted on screamcommunelty.com. That is really interesting because you can see how someone can fall for this easily, right? Because the first thing that anyone looks at when they're clicking on a random link is that they make sure that the link they're clicking is actually legit. And this link right here looks legit, right? It's steamcommunity.com. It's official Steam link, but actually it's not. How is that possible, right? So then I went you know, searching for it and then I found this Reddit post. Is no one gonna talk about the masked links? And you can see this is a screenshot from the official Discord documentation. It says, you can use masked links to make text a clickable or pressable hyperlink. To do so, you need to include the text you want displayed in brackets and then the URL in parentheses. So basically, if you're familiar with the markdown, markdown format, you can insert links in Markdown by using this syntax. So inside the square brackets, you write the text that you want to actually display to the user. And right after that, inside the parenthesis, you give the link that you want the user to redirect to. So the first image right here is the syntax, the Markdown syntax. And the second image right here is the actual output. So you can see this text is actually displayed, but it is made as a link. So when you click on this text, you'll be taken to httpsgoogle.com. You see how this can be exploited or used by scammers or hackers to trick people, right? If you don't understand it yet, let's go ahead and give it a try. So this is my private server and let's give it a try. So inside the square brackets, I give the text that I want to display. So let's say I want to display HTTPS google.com. This is the text that I want to display. And then inside the parenthesis, I give the link that I want the user to, to redirect to. So whenever the user clicks on it, 
you will be taken to whatever link that I'm putting inside the parentheses right now. So in this case, let me just put facebook.com. So let me send this message. It looks like it did not work. So let's try it again, but this time, let me just uh, remove this HTTPS at the beginning. So I'll just say google.com, no HTTPS, nothing, just google.com. And then I'll just do the same thing. I'll give facebook.com inside parentheses like this and let's see what happens. Okay, so it worked. You can see google.com is now a link. And when I click on it, I'm taken to facebook.com and not google.com. That is exactly what the hackers are doing. So they display a legit Steam URL, but the actual link that it is linking to is a phishing website. So when you click on the legit URL thinking that it's a legit website, you're actually taken to the phishing website. And no, this is not a vulnerability on Discord. Discord natively supports Markdown format. And that's what makes Discord unique, right? You can write in Markdown and you can do cool stuff like that. And Markdown allows you to use masked links like this Reddit post right here is talking about. But I must also talk about another red flag that you can kind of see when you're clicking on this link. When you click on this link, Discord tells you that you are leaving Discord and that you're going to an external website. And it also clearly shows you the website you are going to. We are going to facebook.com, but that's not the link that we clicked on. We clicked on google.com. So that's another red flag. It can be really easy to overlook. I understand I overlooked it the first time I clicked on that message. I mean, I knew it was a scam, but I was surprised to see a legit link in the message. So anyways, this is another red flag that people can ignore. And when you click on visit site, that is when you're taken, you're actually taken to that website, to that URL. And this also makes me think it is only showing you this pop-up because you are going to an external website other than Discord. What if you are like, you know, going to something that is hosted on Discord? Would it still show you the message? Let's find out, right? Let me do that again. I am displaying google.com and inside the parenthesis, I give a Discord URL. This is actually a URL to download an exe file that's named as steamsetup.exe. Now this, this exe file can be a malware, it can be a ransomware, it can be anything. But I just want to see if we will be presented with the same pop-up uh, that we were presented with before. But you should also note that this is actually hosted on Discord. So you're not actually leaving Discord to an external website, you are still going to a Discord link. So let's see how this works. I'm gonna send this message and it worked so you can see we got a clickable link for google.com and if i click on it so it did show a pop-up but this is a different pop-up it is not telling us that we are leaving discord because we are not but it says potential dangerous download now this pop-up obviously came up because we are trying to make the user download an exe file which is an executable file and obviously downloading executable files to your computer is a security threat. So it's nice of Discord to do that, but you can just click on continue to download and download it. But again, that's not the point. I just wanted to see if there can be a, uh, if there will be a pop-up that will be displayed by Discord. But what about other file extensions other than .exe? What would happen then? Let's find out. So once again, I do google.com and then I paste the link of a text file. Once again, this is hosted on Discord, so we are not leaving to an external website. So let's see what happens. So we got a clickable link once again for google.com. And when I click on it, there is no pop-up. There is no pop-up. The file is being automatically downloaded, or at least we got a file dialog box. But if you have this option on your browser disabled, which I think is by default disabled on Chrome. So this says, ask where to save each file before downloading. Let me go ahead and disable it. And um, let's try that again. Let's see, uh, let, let me go ahead and click that link again. Click on that. And the file is now downloaded. There is no prompt. There is no uh, confirmation that you are actually downloading a file. 
nothing. The file just automatically download it just like that. Since this option is disabled, it's not even asking us where we want to save the downloaded file. It's going to download it and save it to the default directly directory, which is in the downloads directory of your a computer and if you ask me that's actually really scary but anyways coming back to this steam phishing website let's actually take a deeper look into it so we are actually going to this uh, short link sc dot link so let me actually go to that and see what that is all about right so this is the website sc dot link and it's in russian let me translate that to english and it says reduce link in one click so it looks like some kind of like a URL shortener. So let me try to put a link here, HTTPS, google.com or something. Click on reduce and it gives me a shortened link like this. Now, when I go to this link, I'll be taken to the original link. Um, it works just like any other URL shortener. And I think this is actually made by the hacker himself. I don't think this is an, a service that can be used by anyone because you only get the option to generate the link. You don't get an option to, to see the reports or the analytics of the links that you have created. Uh, I've actually looked more deeply into this website and I did not find a page that gives me the uh, functionality to look at the links that I've created, to look at the reports, to look at the number of clicks, all that stuff. So I'm pretty sure, pretty confident that this is actually owned by the hacker who is running this uh, scam. And when you click on sign in, it opens up a new pop-up and this is obviously a phishing form. And you put in your account name, password, click on sign in and boom, your details will be sent to the hacker. But what about this QR code? What happens if you scan this QR code? Well, the same thing happens. You will, your Steam account will be compromised. It will be taken over by the hacker. And you might ask how that works, right? This QR code is actually generated by the hacker. And when you scan it with your Steam app, you're actually allowing the hacker to log in to your account. And if you want to understand it more clearly, I've already made a video about this. It's called QRL jacking. And I've already made a video about it, which I'll leave in the uh, in the description below and also in the suggested cards above, go ahead and check it out. It's a really interesting social engineering tactic that hackers use to take over your accounts. So I did some uh, OSINT on this domain name over here and I found some interesting stuff. Um, first of all, the who is history, right? So this is a website called osint.sh, which has uh, all the uh, osint tools in just one place. It's a really cool website, really helpful for osint tasks. Anyway, so this is a who is history tool. And look at this. This domain was created on 11th June 2024, which is like three days back. So the point is that this domain is just three days old. Also, in the Whois data, I found an email address at nonoblemail.ru. This is the email address. And I actually ran a reverse Whois search with that email address. And it turns out this is the only domain that they own. So obviously, the hacker or the person behind this is clever enough to use a different email address for each of the domain that they are registering so that they cannot uh, be linked together. I've also done a DNS lookup for the domain name and these are the two A type records that I found. And with these IP address, I ran a reverse IP lookup. And these are the other websites that are linked to the same IP address. But I don't think these are all owned by the scammer. It's probably a shared hosting scenario. And actually this website is using Cloudflare. So actually these websites may not even be sharing the same hosting space with the phishing website. It may just be how Cloudflare works. I also did a certificate search to see if there are any hidden subdomains or virtual hosts. The only thing that I see is the actual domain itself. And also this website is obviously Russian made, I'm guessing because the link shortening service is in Russian. And also if you look at the who is data, uh, the registrar is also Russian based. The email is a Russian mail server. So yeah, I'm guessing it's uh, Russian originated. 
So this is all I was able to find out about uh, this uh, scam or this phishing attack. And yeah, I just made this video because I thought it was really interesting how one can do this, how one can actually, you know, mask links to trick people into visiting a phishing website instead of a legit website. So be careful, do not click on links even though they are legit links because now you know how masked links work and that they can work on Discord and they can be used by hackers, you know, to mask a phishing link with a legit link. That'll be all for this video. I'm gonna ban this guy and make sure uh, that, you know, these messages don't pop up on my server. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Until then, cheers.